Okay, we're going to move forward with removing our transmissions. Here's the good news. Everything we're going to do is really similar on all the different bikes we're going to work on today, and you guys will see how fast it works. But what I am going to be starting to do is uh, starting to label and starting to give uh, words to some of the terminology on these different parts. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So inside this transmission here, you, you have to start to be able to identify a relationship to the flow of power. So in the classroom, do you remember how we started drawing that up on the whiteboard? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's our crankshaft, right? Yep. And do you remember in class how I made a big deal? I kept trying to draw this line right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the transmission area, and this is the actual engine area. So this is sealed, right? Yeah. Over here, this has to be vented. Now we're back to a traditional type of engine case, and somewhere on the case tab or something, we're actually going to have a vent. That's sealed with a gasket, so that's maybe not it. Maybe it vents through the other side. Oh, good call. Yes, it does. So it vents into this side. Okay. Yeah, that would breathe. That would breathe through there. So it's, you know what, boy, look at this, guys. The vent on this one goes all the way up through the power valve hose right here. Oh, wow. Okay. I've never traced it out on this motor. So we go through the crankcase that vents in here. It goes up through the power valve, and then it has a crankcase vent up here. You'll look at some of the other motors when we switch around. What we commonly find is just a nipple back here with a hose. And so since that, since that nipple is just sitting out in the atmosphere and has a hose that goes down to the swing arm, you can imagine mud and crap could get up in there. Or if the bike is submerged in water because someone actually runs through a really deep puddle, they could suck water into that crankcase and that's where you, you know, you'd be telling your customers or yourself, hey, I need to change my fluid so I don't ride with it with that water in there. Make sense? Yeah. What's water do to the bearings? Yeah. It rusts them and we have problems. So. Uh, all right, cool. I'm glad we just uh, were able to finish finding that on this bike here. So uh, it proves the fact that the transmission has to be vented, is what Why we're does saying. It have to be vented? So we can have flow. Otherwise, as those gears spin in here, if there were no vent, it would build pressure, and then it would blow seals and gaskets. Okay, so we have to be able to allow air to move around in there. Make sense? Okay. So let's uh, let's take a couple other look. Uh, at some things about our engines that you guys need to be familiar with. And you know, this is the thing guys, being a mechanic, nobody ever said it was easy. The other thing is, is that you just need knowledge to be able to make it to be um, efficient and easy. All cases that have this much machining going on, would you agree, have to be precisely aligned? Yeah. If I don't align this other case with this, how is my crankshaft bearings going to line up? Well, it wouldn't, right? So do you see how we have dowel pins? Mm -hmm. Anytime, you guys see this on some of your lab sheets, anytime that you need to precisely align something, what's the minimum amount of dowel pins? Two. Two, Two. okay, so that we can ship this around. So whose job is it to verify these are here? Ours. Ours. Yeah. When we put this in the parts washer, what happens these dowel pins a lot? Fall they fall out. Okay, I keep repeating myself, but I think you guys understand the value, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here are things we'll start to focus on here is the different parts here. So we know our crankshaft is here, and now you really start to get a, a track of that intake where the reed valves bolt to, and how it gets that air fuel oil mix down here below the piston. You can see the transfer part up into the cylinder when it starts to go. If you take your cylinder upside down, you can start to see how big those transfer ports are too. As we start to get some of these names on here, um, when we talked about where our crankshaft is, what's the first shaft we come in contact with when we main. gear them up? Our main. main. And then what's the next one, Chris? Counter shaft. Okay, so main shaft, counter shaft. Okay. If we want to determine how many speeds are in a transmission, we don't need a service manual or anything. We count how many gears are on one shaft. If it's a five speed, there's going to be five gears on there. If it's a six speed, there'll be six gears. The only time that might be a problem is if the vehicle has reverse. Uh, usually it's going to have another gear, a couple of gears up like this, um, but I have seen some kits that add a second set of gears um, to reverse them on there too. So this, uh, back to our dirt bike stuff here though, the next thing I want you guys to see is the forks. So this is what's going to slide the gears back and forth. So this one has a gear that fell off uh, when we were taking it apart. So you guys are going to learn all about how these... Um, these engage. So this gear here is going to engage up into this one. Do you see these parts of the gear here? Yep. Those are called the ears. So some people call them a dog ear. It's just a, a nickname that goes with that. What did your textbooks call them? The dogs, right? 
So ears, dog, something. But what we know is what's going to happen is we're going to move this gear over to engage with this gear. And do you see the slots that it slides into? Mm -hmm. And what that does is it actually, when once I engage this gear over, what it's really doing is locking this pair. Because this is a fixed gear, meaning it's fixed to the shaft. This gear here free wheels. Do you see how it's, it's not splined? Mm -hmm. So it free wheels on there. So this does nothing unless it's locked with a fixed gear. Okay? So we have different types of gears. We have three. We have a freewheeling gear. If you remember from your text, we have a fixed. And then we have sliding. Okay? On the other side of this, it's common. It'll have another set of ears on here to engage in the other direction as well. So to continue on with components, hey, you guys want some good news? Mm -hmm. Metric transmissions, you go the microfish, that's all you ever need. There's no measuring, there's no adjusting of the lengths and the thickness of the shims and everything else. In the Harley world and in the uh, small engine world and uh, <coughs> tractor world or whatnot, we have all kinds of specialty tools where we have to measure assembled heights and all kinds of things. If you go the parts fish and it says gear, snap ring, bushing, gear, bushing, snap ring, whatever that order says, you just put it in and it always works. There's, there's nothing you have to worry about that, okay? All right. Um, taking a look at some of the other parts here is we've got to figure out how do we actually slide these around. It's with the use of these shift forks that are basically driven by your shift drum. Okay, so you can call this the shift drum. Some people call it the cam, the shift cam. You recognize some of those terms? Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember before that we were rotating that star pattern? Mm -hmm. As we rotate that star pattern, I'll try and make this work here. Do you see here how, as I rotate this, and if I find the right spot, this is hard to do when it's uh, just all loose like this. Because what did I say is the problem with trying to shift it like this? Anybody remember? The, weight. the pressure, the gravity of that is, is holding everything down. But as I rotate this, you're going to see here, I'm going to go ahead and slide this out of the way. I'm going to just pull my shift cam out. Do you see the channels in here? Mm -hmm. So you can see as I rotate this around, it's going to take these and move them up or down to engage into whatever gear. So this color shift cam. Now you guys are going to learn about where these wear. I got tons of, I got damaged ones upstairs. Um, just real quickly, they typically wear on these corners right here. What happens is, uh, as you shift through the gears and slam through there, it rounds those sharp edges off, and that's what will give you uh, the problem to where it won't hold the gear. This, for this fork, this right here is a gear position. This is traveling to the next gear. This is traveling, but this is a gear position where you see those flats. So they're high places aware as you try and go through there. Okay, so we'll get in a lot of detail and we'll look this stuff up uh, later. I'm just going to set this off to the side with my other transmission components. The other thing is, is they ride on bearings in either case. So we always want to make sure and check the bearings out. Now this is the way I like to do this. I'm going to get my work area real organized right here. And I'm going to be prepared to transfer this stuff over. This is a nice way to do it. So I'm going to pull the pin. This is a shift fork pin. Simple enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's the fork and it's holding that. Now what I like to do is just pick it up and I want to transfer it over here. Make sense? I'm going to take the pair here. So there's two on one and one on another. And I'm going to immediately reassemble them like so. Okay, so this one here I can just go like this. And if I really am of, you know, haven't done this in a while or something, I can set them kind of like that too. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so then what I want to try to do is a lot of times you can't pull just one shaft out because it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit one of the larger gears. So it's not uncommon for us to have to... Okay, this, one, this one freed, so I'm going to immediately just move it over. Okay, and this guy here... Okay, I'm going to need something to drive that through a little bit further, a socket. Mm -hmm. Usually this will just pull right through, but this is okay. I'd rather it be tight than loose. Okay, this one here will work. This won't be too hard. Now, see, I'm not going in the middle. I do not want to wedge that in there. Okay, is there a possibility I have threads in there too? Yeah. Yeah, for a sprocket bolt or something. This isn't going to take much. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so the right tool for the job, super important. 
Yeah. Let's give you that back. So nobody using the pointed ones here. Stop. You'll find a sweet spot. Okay, let me go here. So what I also want to do is I want to make sure I'm staying in that same direction as I pulled it out of the case. Some of you guys, as you store your parts, might want to just simply do this, just to kind of keep things organized as you uh, as you learn your transmission and your uh, and your assembly. Here. Um, just off here. I'm pretty sure that what happens is I have a shim, a bushing, I have the gear, then I have another shim, and then if you remember from the outsides where we start to have snap rings. Okay, simple enough, and now I want you guys to look at this and check this out, okay? So we have one, two, three, four, five, we have six gear sets, so how many transmission speeds? Six. Six, okay? So, there's a couple different ways that we can uh, get into this, and we'll get real in depth in the theory, but just real quickly right now, the main shaft always attaches the clutch basket, okay? The other thing is you'll notice is it's really clean because it's been encased in oil. The counter shaft is dirty and gnarly because it's been outside the engine, and it's where the mud and stuff will collect because it's where the counter shaft sprocket attaches. So it's a couple ways that a customer could bring this in, and you'd be able to identify right away which is which. The other thing about the main shaft, see how much longer it is? Mm -hmm. Would you agree this surface rides against a bearing in the case, right? Yeah. That surface rides right against here. We're going to really spend some time talking about that and about heights and alignments and stuff in the future. So from these bearing surfaces, you can see the extension of those shafts and how far they go out. Um, does anybody remember on the right side of the counter shaft, the gear that attaches that, what its function is? It's the link between the kickstart and the uh, clutch. Yeah, it's a link between the kickstarter and the clutch basket, so you guys are both right on that. The other thing I want to just take a real quick look at is I want to be able to show you real quickly, you can always tell which gear is what, with no manual or anything. This is everything in the world. From the input side, which is our main shaft, mm -hmm. okay, the smallest gear on the main shaft the is first gear. <clears throat> the largest one on the counter shaft is first gear. So watch this. Now here's what I do. Now for me, I'm going to need to rotate this sideways. I'm just going to do this for my benefit so that I can be uh, correct from the first time around. I'm going to go ahead and go like this. And what I do is I like to actually get down here at, um, at more at eye level. And if I wanted to take my straight edge out of my tool kit or anything, I could lay it across here. But the smallest one is first gear. So what's that? What's it say about the biggest one? The biggest one's going to be top speed, yeah. right? Yeah. So and watch so real be... quick. So by getting here at this eye level, I can do this. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth gear. Why are they staggered like that all over the place? It's just the way to make the shift cam and drum be able to connect the gears and the whole star pattern. Some people struggle dealing with the main shaft side of it or the input side because your eyes can't see it as easy. If you look at it from this side, the, the gears seem to have a more noticeable difference. Okay, so if I go here and I say largest on the counter shaft, now look at this. For, I, so this is first, and I have to go the other direction, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's second then? Well, second, second, third, third fourth, 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 fifth, fifth and sixth. sixth. So what you guys are going to do in the future is we're going to lay your transmissions out, and we're going to take a piece of paper under there, and you guys are going to write out first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and they should match on the other side. Now let me ask you this, and you guys can cycle through this. If I stand right here, it's just a whole bunch of gears. It's really hard to see that level. Does that make sense? But when I get down and I look at the tops of them, holy cow, guys, I mean, this, this gets really, really pretty easy.